Hey Kipsters, Miss Bird here. Let's go ahead and continue reading holes, and today we're going to be reading chapters 35 and 36. Remember, as we're reading, make sure you're listening so that you can respond to the question below. You can respond in YouTube, or you can respond um, in our Google Classroom. Remember to write your name so you can get credit for your response. All right, chapter 35. Zero's face looked like a jack-o'-lantern that had been left out for too many days past Halloween. Half rotten with sunken eyes and a drooping smile. Is that water? he asked. His voice was weak and raspy. His lips were so pale they were almost white, and his tongue seemed to flop around uselessly in his mouth as he spoke, as if it kept getting in the way. It's empty, said Stanley. He stared at Zero, not quite believing that he was real. I tried to bring you the whole water truck, but he smiled sheepishly. I drove it into a hole. I can't believe you're... Me neither, said Zero. Come on, we gotta get you back to camp. Zero shook his head. I'm not going back. You have to. We both have to. You want some sploosh? Zero asked. What? Zero shaded his eyes with his forearm. It's cooler under the boat, he said. Stanley watched Zero crawl back through his hole. It was a miracle he was still alive, but Stanley knew he would have to get him back to camp soon, even if he had to carry him. He crawled after him, and it was just and he was just able to squeeze his body through the hole. He never would have fit when he first came to Camp Green Lake. He'd lost a lot of weight. As he pulled himself through, his legs um, struck something sharp and hard. It was a shovel. For a second, Stanley wondered how it got there, but then remembered that Zero had taken it with him after striking Mr. Pendansky. It was cooler under the boat, which was half buried in the dirt. There were enough cracks. There were enough cracks and holes in the bottom of the boat now the roof, to provide light and ventilation. He could see empty jars scattered around. Zero held the jar in his hand and grunted as he tried to unscrew the lid. What is it? Sploosh! His friend was strained as he worked on the jar. That's what I call it. They were buried under the boat. He still couldn't get the lid off. I found sixteen jars. Here, hand me the shovel. Stanley didn't have a lot of room to move. He reached behind him, grabbed the wooden end of the shovel, and held it out to Zero, blade first. Sometimes you just have to, Zero said. Then he hit the jar against the blade of the shovel, breaking the top of the jar clean off. He quickly brought the jar to his mouth and licked the sploosh off the jagged edges before it spilled. Careful, Stanley warned. Zero picked up the crack lid and licked the sploosh off that as well. Then he handed the broken jar to Stanley. Drink some. Hold on, Kipsters. I need to charge my computer. Just one moment. You can get a full view of my closet. I know. It's exciting. Tons of clothes in here. Let me squeeze out. I know. Doing the most. Okay. I made it. I'm free. Looks like it's not too loud out here. Just a little music in the background playing, but maybe I'll do the rest in this room. Welcome to Miss Bird's bedroom. All right, I'm all charged, ready to go. So he tells Stanley to drink some. Stanley held it in his hand and stared at it for a moment. He was afraid of the broken glass. He was also afraid of the sploosh. It looked like mud. Whatever he w it was, he realized, it must have been in the boat when the boat sank. That minute was probably over a hundred years old. Who knew what kind of bacteria might be living in it? It's good, said Zero, encouraging him. He wondered if Zero had heard of bacteria. He raised the jar to his mouth and carefully took a sip. It was a warm, bubbly, mushy nectar, sweet and tangy. It felt like heaven as it flowed over his dry mouth and down his parched throat. He thought it might have been some kind of fruit at some time. Perhaps peaches. Mm. 
Zero smiled at him. I told you it was good. Stanley didn't want to drink too much, but it was too good to resist. They passed the jar back and forth until it was empty. How many are left? he asked. None, said Zero. Stanley's mouth dropped. Now I have to take you back, he said. I'm not digging any more holes, said Zero. They won't make you dig, Stanley promised. They'll probably send you to a hospital like Barf Bag. Barf Bag stepped on a rattlesnake, said Zero. Stanley remembered how he'd almost done the same. I guess he didn't hear the rattle. He did it on purpose, said Zero. You think? He took off his shoe and sock first. Stanley shivered as he tried to imagine it. What's Ma Maria Lu La O U? asked Zero. What? Zero concentrated hard. Mar Ya La O U. I have no idea. I'll show you, said Zero. He crawled back out from under the from under the boat. Stanley followed. Back outside, he had to shield his eyes from the brightness. Zero walked around to the back of the boat and pointed to the upside down letters. Ma, m, r, y, l, l, o, u. Oh, Stanley smiled. Mary Lou, it's the name of the boat. Mary Lou, Stanley repeat, er, Zero repeated, studying the letters. I thought Y made the Y sound. It does, said Stanley, but not when it's at the end of a word. Sometimes Y is a vowel and sometimes it's a consonant. Zero suddenly groaned. He grabbed his stomach and bent over. Are you all right? Zero dropped to the ground. He lay on his side and his, with his knees pulled up to his chest. He continued to groan. <sighs> Stanley watched helplessly. He wondered if it was the sploosh. He looked back toward Camp Green Lake. At least he thought it was the direction of Camp Green Lake. He wasn't entirely sure. Zero stopped moaning and his body, his body slowly unbent. I'm taking you back, said Stanley. Zero managed to sit up. He took several deep breaths. Look, I got a plan so you won't get in trouble, Stanley assured him. Remember when I found the gold tube? Remember I gave it to X-Ray and the warden went crazy making us dig where we thought X-Ray found it? I think I can tell the warden where I really found it and I think she'll let us off. I'm not going back, said Zero. You've got nowhere else to go, said Stanley. Zero said nothing. You'll die out here, said Stanley. Then I'll die out here. Stanley didn't know what to do. He had come to rescue Zero and instead drank the last of his sploosh. He looked off in the distance. I want you to look at something. I'm not... I just want you to look at that mountain up there. See the one that has something sticking out of it? Yeah, I think... What does it look like to you? Does it look like anything? Zero said nothing. But as he studied the mountain, his right hand slowly formed into a fist. He raised his thumb. His eyes went from the mountain to his hand, then back to the mountain. Chapter 36 They put four of the unbroken jars in the burlap sack in case they might be able to use them. Stanley carried the sack. Zero held the shovel. I should warn you, Stanley said. I'm not exactly the luckiest guy in the world. Zero wasn't worried. When you spend your whole life living in a hole, he said, the only way you can go is up. They gave each other the thumbs up sign, then headed out. It was the hottest part of the day. Stanley's empty, empty, empty canteen was still strapped around his neck. He thought back to the water truck and wished he'd had at least stopped and filled his canteen before running off. They hadn't gone very far before Zero had another attack. He clutched his stomach as he let himself fall to the ground. Stanley could only wait for it to pass. The sploosh had saved Zero's life, but it was now destroying him from the inside. He wondered how long it would be before he, too, felt the effects. He looked at Big Thumb. It didn't seem any closer than when they first started out. Zero took a deep breath and managed to sit up. Can you walk? Stanley asked him. 
Just give me a second, Zero said. He took another breath, then using the shovel, pulled himself back to his feet. He gave Stanley the thumbs up sign and they continued. Sometimes Stanley would try to go for a long while without looking at Big Thumb. He'd make a mental snapshot of how it looked, then wait maybe 10 minutes before looking at it again to see if it seemed closer. It never did. It was like chasing the moon. And if they ever reached it, he realized, then they'd still have to climb it. I wonder who she was, said Zero. Who? Mary Lou, said Zero. Stanley smiled. I guess she was once a real person on a real lake. It's hard to imagine. I bet she was pretty, said Zero. Somebody must have loved her a lot to name a boat after her. Yeah, said Stanley. I bet she looked great in a bathing suit sitting in a boat with her boy f as her boyfriend while her boyfriend rode. Zero used the shovel as a third leg. Two legs weren't enough to keep him up. I gotta stop and rest, he said after a while. Stanley looked at Big Thumb. It still didn't look any closer. He was afraid if Zero stopped, he might never get started again. We're almost there, he said. He wondered which was closer, Camp Green Lake or Big Thumb. I really have to sit down. Just see if you can go a little. Zero collapsed. The shovel stayed up a fraction of a second longer, perfectly balanced on the tip of the blade. Then it fell next to him. Zero knelt, bent over with his head on the ground. Stanley could hear a very low moaning sound coming from him. He looked at the shovel and couldn't help but think that he might need to have to dig a grave. Zero's last hole. And who will dig a grave for me, he thought. But Zero did get up, once again flashing thumbs up. Give me some words, he said weakly. It took Stanley a few seconds to realize what he meant. Then he smiled and said, R U N. Zero sounded it out to himself. Run, run. Good. F U N. Fun. Fun. The spelling seemed to help Zero. It gave him something to concentrate on besides his pain and weakness. It distracted Stanley as well. The next time he looked up at Big Thumb, it really did seem closer. They quit spelling words when it hurt too much to talk. Stanley's throat was dry. He was weak and exhausted. Yet as bad as he felt, he knew that Zero felt ten times worse. As long as Zero could keep going, he could keep going too. It was possible, he thought, he hoped, that he didn't get any of the bad bacteria. Zero hadn't been able to unscrew the lid. lid. Maybe the bad germs couldn't get in either. Maybe the bacteria were only in the jars which opened easily, the ones he was now carrying in his sack. What scared Stanley the most about dying wasn't his actual death. He figured he could handle the pain. It wouldn't be much worse than what he felt now. In fact, maybe at the moment of his death, he would be too weak to feel pain. Death would be a relief. What worried him the most was the thought of his parents not knowing what happened to him, not knowing whether he was dead or alive. He hated to imagine what it would be like for his mother and father, day after day, month after month, not knowing, living on false hope. For him, at least, it would be over. For his parents, the pain would never end. He wondered if the warden would send out a search party to look for him. It didn't seem likely. She didn't send anyone to look for Zero, but no one cared about Zero. They simply destroyed his files. But Stanley had a family. She couldn't pretend he was never there. He wondered what she would tell them, and when. What do you think's up there? Zero asked. Stanley looked at the top of Big Thumb. Oh, probably an Italian restaurant, he said. Zero managed to laugh. I think I'll get a pepperoni pizza and a large root beer, said Stanley. I want an ice cream sundae, said Zero, with nuts and whipped cream and bananas and hot fudge. The sun was almost directly in front of them. The thumb pointed up toward it. All right, Kipsters, we're all done with our reading for today. Make sure that you're responding to that question, and I will see you tomorrow.